Good evening, Mario. The first question would be, could you introduce us to the Enneagram, please? The Enneagram is a system of nine different personality styles. Uh, each of these styles are rooted in adaptive strategies, ways of problem, solving problems, ways of being in the world. Um, these strategies are rooted in an affective need. They're a way that I need to feel as I'm interacting with the world. And that need to feel a certain way shapes the way we think. And the way we think shapes the way we behave. So the Enneagram is a model of identifying these nine patterns of feeling, thinking, and doing in the world. And each one of them is rooted in a preferred strategy. One that we use more than we use the other eight. So, I understand there are variations to these nine types. Could you please guide us through these subtypes? Sure. So, these um, the variations on the types are referred to as subtypes, as you said. And what a subtype is, is a variation on these nine, each of these nine Enneagram types, uh, based on an instinctual bias. Okay? We're mammals, and as mammals we have instinctive drives, and we have many instincts. But those instincts do tend to cluster into three broad groups. I refer to those three broad groups as preserving, navigating, and transmitting. And we'll come back to that shortly, but the important thing to understand is that our preferred strategy interacts with each of our instinctual bias biases, and together they create what's called a subtype. So someone who's an Enneagram type 9, for example, if they are dominant in their preserving instinct, they're called a preserving subtype, meaning a variation on the original type. So, how do you explain these instinctual biases to people? What I usually do is I ask people to think about watching a documentary about peacocks, say on Animal Planet or some other nature channel. The first part of the documentary talks about what I refer to as the preserving domain of instincts. Right? Uh, this is the nesting and nurturing habits of the peacock. How the peacock makes its nest, how it feeds itself, how it feeds its young, how it grooms itself. Fundamentally, it's addressing all of the bottom layer of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay? The second part of the documentary discusses the, um, the social domain of the peacocks, what we call the navigating domain. This is all about how the peacock um, finds its way through the politics of the group, it's how it establishes its place in the pecking order, how it understands status and hierarchy, how it understands what the mores of being a peacock are. The third domain is what we call the transmitting domain. And this is fundamentally how the peacock draws the attention of the pea hen so they can bond and they can make little pea babies. Now, Human beings are more complicated than peacocks, but when it comes to our instinctual drives, we're not that different, and most of our instinctual needs fall into these same three broad categories. The preserving domain it has to do with the nest, it has to do with nurturing, it has to do with our well-being and comfort. The navigating domain, how do we establish our place in the society? How do we know what our identity is? How do we know who we can trust who we can reciprocate with. And in the transmitting domain, again, it is how can we take some part of ourselves and share it with others. So we have to learn how to bond with them, how to connect deeply and intimately, so we can pass on not only our genes, but also things that are important to us, artifacts, the things we create, uh, the ideas we have, things that we want to pass on to the next generation. So the way to think about these three instinctual biases are in the same way that the peacock has these three domains of instinctive impulses and desires, humans do as well. And the strategy is how, how we go about satisfying those needs.
Okay? So the type one who's striving to be perfect, their way of interacting with the world is going to strive to be perfect in the preserving domain, if that is their subtype. Okay? However, if they're uh, a navigating subtype, they're going to strive to be perfect in the way that they interact with other people and not be so focused on the preserving domain. Okay? So we have these three instinctual domains and we have the nine strategies and the way those two things come together is how we come up with 27 subtypes. You place a lot of interest in the biological aspect. Why is that so? I think that if we really want to understand the psychological implications of these instinctual biases on the way that the Enneagram types express themselves, we really have to understand the biology related to it, because it does shape the way that we act psychologically. One of the uh, things to really understand, and uh, this is a big misunderstanding in the Enneagram world is that we don't just have three instincts. There is a neo-Freudian model of having three instinctive drives, but we know now through modern science that it's actually more complicated than this, that we have many instinctive drives. Okay? Now they do seem to cluster into three broad categories, but if we don't understand that there are multiple instincts and very often multiple competing instincts, inside each of these domains, then we might not understand the behaviors that we're seeing that are caused by some of these competing drives. Okay? For example, each of us uh, has evolved to both cooperate and to compete. Right? So we have these impulses that drive us to, um, to go after resources and try to get them ahead of other people. But we also have this impulse that causes us to, as a social, member of a social species, to try to get along with other people, to cooperate with them. Okay? So we have one instinctive drive saying compete, get what's yours. We have another instinctive drive that says share, collaborate, cooperate. And this can cause real dissonance inside of us. And we often don't understand why we have these competing impulses. Okay. And we don't understand why the people that we interact with in our lives can be so contradictory. Right? The other thing is, is that if we don't understand really the biological basis of these instincts, we might not see very relevant behaviors. For example, when we talk about the transmitting instinct, we, if we don't understand the transmitting aspect of this, meaning the need to transmit parts of ourselves out there, we don't understand the behaviors we're seeing. Okay? So understand the biology is really important to understanding the psychological dynamics at their fullest. Okay? Another thing we have to understand is that the, these subtypes are the result of a combination of forces. Okay? It's partly our nature, our genetic impulses, our instinctive biological drives. It is our environment that we're born into that shapes the way these instincts express themselves. Okay? We know that instincts and genetic uh, behaviors are triggered by environmental circumstances. Okay? So we have to understand that it's partly biology, it's partly the forces around us acting upon us and causing, causing these instincts to express in different ways. And then we have to understand the importance of repetition as shaping forces in the way we display our subtype behaviors.